Good day, friends. Welcome to my channel, lecture series in Power Electronics. In this lecture, we are going to see about the basics of DC machines. Introduction to DC machines. Before going into the basics of machines, let us see what a machine is. A machine is a device which converts one form of energy to other form. A machine can either be a motor or a generator. So, for example, when a fan is switched on, it rotates. This means that when you provide electrical energy, it is converted into a mechanical energy. And that is done by a motor which is present in the fan. So, electrical motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy energy then similarly when there is a power failure we can switch on a generator and we get electrical energy in the case of very big generators turbines are used to provide a mechanical energy input to the generator which converts it into electrical energy so a generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy before understanding how the generator works we will go into the very basic concept of how magnetism is obtained from electricity. Suppose we have a conducting material out of which we wind a coil as shown in the figure. And if we pass a current through this, after some time, if we check, we will see that this conducting material acquires magnetism. That means that magnetism can be obtained if we have electricity. So, if magnetism can be obtained by using electricity, why not we get electricity? Uh, why not we uh, magnetism is obtained from electricity? How we can get electricity from magnetism? That can be seen from this. Suppose we have a magnet and we want electricity to be received by us. What we can do is we wind a coil over a magnet and as we know that from the north pole to the south pole there will be magnetic lines of force and these magnetic lines of force are invisible and they are stationary by doing uh, something if the magnetic lines of force are disturbed that is either by rotating this magnet or by rotating this coil if the invisible lines of magnetic force are disturbed then there will be a change in the flux and whenever there is a change in the flux there is going to be a electricity production so when a coil is bound over a magnet and if a change in the magnetic flux in case is produced by either moving the coil or the magnet can be observed that the current flows through the coil if the circuit is closed this shows that electricity can be obtained from magnetism. So we can see that magnetism can be obtained from electricity as well. Electricity can be obtained from magnetism. This forms the very basic principle of a generator. So if we want to have a generator, what we need is we need a magnet, we need a coil and a mechanism which can rotate either the magnet or the coil. So by having this, we'll be able to get the electricity out of it. This forms the basics for a generator. So here, based on, uh, so DC machines, if we see DC motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy, DC generator converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. Depending on what input we get, the same machine can either work as a motor or a generator. If electrical energy is given as the input, then we get a mechanical output that is that becomes a motor. And if we give a mechanical input to the same machine and generate electricity, then becomes a generator. So for a generator, what is the basic requirement is a steady magnetic field, a conductor or a coil which is capable of carrying current and an arrangement which can move either the conductor or the magnet. So this one, when we have a conducting material placed like this, pass current through this, we'll be able to see that this piece becomes a magnet. So electricity is producing 
magnetism in this case. And this is the principle used for creating electromagnets inside any machine. We represent this as a, we call this as a field coil. And the main purpose of having a field coil is to give required flux inside the machine. Current, when it is passed through this coil, these two parts become the magnet. We do not use permanent magnets in the normal DC machines. We make use of this principle to get north and the south pole. So when we have already the magnetism present here and we have a coil present here, then pass a current through this. We already have magnetism. We have a coil and in the coil, if a current is passed, there will be an electric field created here. Already there is a magnetic field present here. The interaction of the electric field as well as the magnetic field will create a torque which will make the armature rotate. That is when the input energy, electrical energy is provided, the coil would start rotating. And this is the principle of a motor. Electricity already present to create the magnetic field and there is electricity provided for creating another electric field. This is the principle of motor. We are providing an electrical input, we are getting a mechanical output. If we provide the mechanical input, that is instead of giving electricity into the coil, we connect it, couple it mechanically to a prime mover which can rotate this. When this armature is rotated in the magnetic field, then it would produce a current which could be taken out like this. So if we have an armature, this is called the armature, the armature is provided with electricity, it rotates. When it is rotated, it provides electricity. So at least theoretically, we can say that a machine can be used either as a generator or a motor based on the input given to it. The prime mover is a machine which can provide a mechanical input to the armature. This can be any type of machine. It can even be another motor. It can be a windmill. It can be a turbine or any source which can provide a mechanical input. So this forms the basics of motor and the generator. Uh, basic parts if we see here you have the stator in which the coil is present and in the coil when the electricity is provided, they become magnet. This is the rotor which, which houses the conductors and we have a part for the commutator. The basic parts of a DC machine are magnetic frame or yoke. You have the pole cores and the pole shoes, field coils, armature core, armature winding, commutator and cardinal brushes. This is the frame on which the field coils are mounted and this does the purpose of this has two functions one it protects the complete machine second one it carries the flux produced by the field coils the pole cores or the pole shoes are uh, attached to the yoke the field the field coil is wound on this pole core the pole shoe has a tapered structure so that the flux can be distributed over, over more area. And they are all laminated to say that two, uh, there is, they are made into a number of small pieces and then stacked together. So the pole core as well as the pole, this is called the pole shoe. This is the pole core. They are laminated to reduce the losses. They are present inside the uh, yoke. There is a magnetic coil. This magnetic coil is shoved into the pole core. The pole core, the magnetic coil is just pushed inside and it becomes the field coil. So there is a pole core, pole shoe, and here surrounding this pole core, you have the magnetic coil. So this is the field circuit. The armature, armature houses the conductors this will also have a core onto that the coil will be these are called the slots in which the coil is going to be mounted 
and they are also laminated it is not a single solid piece but it is made up of number of laminations like this then all are put together to form the core then this is the armature conductor the conductor the winding is placed on the armature core the ends of these coil are brought to the part called the commutator and from the commutator the current is given to the machine if it is a motor the current is taken out from the machine if it is a generated through a part called the brushes so these are the major parts of a dc machine the representation of a dc motor the representation of a dc generator is shown here okay. this is done for shown for a dc shunt machine and the major parts being the motor and the armature and they are connected in parallel it is called as a shunt machine when it is a dc motor the representation is like this we show the motor here the circle two brushes and this field is represented like this the supply voltage is marked with v the current is taken from the supply so the arrow is pointing towards the armature this current is called the line current is yes, this splits into two parts one as armature current and one as the field current and here the overall current is taken from the supply the line current is equal to the sum of the field current and the armature current if it is a motor it is represented like this but if it is a generator we get electricity from the generator so the marking is like this the machine is marked with the letter armature is marked with the letter g the current comes out of the generator marked as ia current coming out of the generator is marked as ia and this is what is going to get split into two parts one for the field and one side for the line current so in this particular case the armature current is the sum of the field current and the line current so in this lecture we have seen about the basic principle of a dc machine the generator principle the motor principle and the representation of dc motor and the generator hope this clarifies the basics of dc machine thank you